Hey everyone, welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to share with you how to build a Discord bot in Python. This is going to be a really simple bot just to help you get started with the concept of building a Discord bot, but we'll be able to send commands to it as a user and the bot will also be able to do things at a scheduled time. So for example, we can tell it to do something after 10 minutes or every 10 minutes or something like that. So we're going to learn how to do that stuff. And if you're not familiar with what Discord is, then Discord is sort of like a chat slash community platform that is really popular in a lot of industries, including games, finance, and tech in general as well. You have a lot of existing Discord communities you can join and people would chat there. So it's definitely very useful to learn. You can use it to build uh, great projects, but also automate a lot of things that you care about. So before we get started, let's talk quickly about the architecture, how it works. For a Discord bot, uh, we usually have the user on one side. So that's gonna be us, a uh, person who's interacting with Discord. And then in the middle, you have the Discord app. So that could be an app on the phone or the web app or the downloadable app on your desktop. So Discord is organized by servers. These are actually communities or guilds or whatever it is. And you can add bots to a server. And that's how you can interact with a bot. So you can interact with a bot by chatting with it, or you can also have the bots monitor certain events like users joining or leaving the server. Uh, to build a bot, we write this as a really simple Python file, which we run. We have to run it somewhere. In this tutorial, we're gonna make it very simple and we're just gonna run it on our own computer. So we have a computer, I guess our desktop or our personal computer, we'll create this Python file and we'll run it in a loop and that's how it will interact with Discord. So we'll have to have an internet connection to be able to work with Discord. We can eventually host this bot on a service like AWS or something so that it's running 24 seven, uh, but that's out of the scope of this tutorial. So we're not gonna cover that today. We're just gonna build the bot and host it on our local desktop. And just to give you a preview of what you'll learn to build today, the bot's gonna be pretty simple, but you can do quite a few things with it. You can say hello to it and it'll learn how to say hello back. You can also add two numbers together like as a function. So for example, add four and five and it'll return nine or we can also make it add an arbitrary list of numbers together. So for this one, we're adding a bunch of numbers and it'll sum all of those together. We'll also make the bot a little bit smarter so that we can start uh, a study session or a work session and it's gonna record the start time of that session. And then when we stop it, we send a command to say, stop this, end the session, it'll tell us how long that session was active for. So how long we've been studying or working for. And finally, we're gonna also see how to make the bot do things or do tasks on a scheduled time. So in this case, I want the bot to remind us to take a break after a certain amount of minutes. So we'll see how to do that as well. If that all sounds good to you, then let's get started with the project. Before we can actually get started with the coding, we'll have to set up the bot on our Discord account. So I'm assuming you already have signed up with Discord. If you have, then I want you to go to the Discord developer portal. Just type in Discord developer portal in Google and then click it. And if you're logged in, you should see a page like this. So this is your dashboard. Uh, and here at the top, there'll be a tab called applications. So you click on that and we wanna create an application. Our bot will need to live inside an application. So I'm gonna create one right now and I'm gonna call it uh, Discord study bot. And once that's created, you can edit its information here. You can change the name or the description. You can even add an avatar. So I've added this golden swan there just so I can tell that it's my bot. Um, and then you've got a couple of keys and IDs down here, which we won't need just yet. After you have an application, the next step is to actually create a bot for the application. So go to this bot tab over here and click that. And then click add bot over here. And then here we'll have to give it a username. So I'm just gonna call it Piskami study bot. And we're also going to need a token for the bot as well. A token is like the bot's password. And this is something you have to keep secret. But I'm going to create it here for you to see because I'm going to delete this token after. However, if you do this for real, you shouldn't reveal the token to anyone because you can think of it as the password to your bot. Anyone who has access to this token can do whatever they want with your bot and can make it do the bot do whatever it wants, which is a security risk. So make sure that this is secret once you actually generate it. So I'm going to click reset token. And then I get this new token here, which I'm going to copy. Uh, I'm going to need this for later. Okay, so now I have a bot and I've got my token. I can create a Python file to actually uh, initialize this bot. So let's go over to VS Code. Here I've got an empty project. First of all, I need to make sure that I have the discord.py dependency. So if you have Python installed, type pip install discord.py. Now once that's installed, you can check the version by typing pip show discord.py. 
For this tutorial, I'm using version 2.0.1, and I know that the Discord plugin actually has some breaking changes between versions, so if you're following this tutorial and things don't work properly, then please make sure that you install version 2.0.1 or something similar, uh, just so that it's consistent with what I'm using. So now I have Discord installed in my Python environment. I've got my project folder. Let's create uh, the actual script. And I'm gonna call it bot.py. And remember that token we created earlier? So I'm just gonna create a variable to store that here because we're gonna need it later when we actually uh, use our bot. Now let's go back to the application page because our setup isn't done yet. We now have to add the bot to the server. So I'm assuming as well that by this point, you've also created a private server or your own Discord server. If you don't have that already, you can just do it from the Discord interface. It's free and it's really easy to do. Once you have the server, we'll have to add the bot to the server. And the way that works is that we generate a link from this developer dashboard. And then when we visit the link, we'll have the option to add that bot to our server. So we'll have to generate the link first. To do that, you go to OAuth2 and then this URL generator. And here we select um, the type of URL we wanna to generate to add these permissions to our server. So it's gonna be bot. And now we have to select the permissions for what we want it to do. Uh, I'm just gonna select administrator for now, just so that it can do anything. But if you do this for real, you probably only wanna select the things that you know the bot needs, just so that it doesn't have too many permissions. Uh, once you've done that, you have a generated URL. So just click copy. Once you paste that in, if you are logged in to Discord in that browser, you have this prompt. Uh, you have who you're signed in as, so this is my Pixagami account, and then you can choose the server. So if you have a server, uh, like this one I call a Pixagami server, you can click continue and then add the bot to the server. And once that's done, if you go to the Discord and you go to that server, uh, you should be able to see that your bot has joined. We're also going to create a new channel for it to interact with as well, so I'm going to call it simple Discord bot channel. And here I've created a brand new channel that I'm gonna use for my Discord bot. Another thing you wanna do uh, if you're working with Discord as a developer is to turn on developer mode. This will actually give you a couple of shortcuts and things you can do which make your life easier as a developer, which we'll see soon. But for now, just turn that on by going to user settings, clicking on that, scrolling down, going to app settings and then advanced, and then enable developer mode. So for me, that's already enabled and then we can click Escape. One example of something that the developer mode gives us is the ability to right-click a channel and copy the channel ID. This is actually useful because we're gonna need this ID because we want the bot to interact in this channel only. So I'm gonna right-click that and copy the channel ID, and I'm gonna go back to my Python file, and I'm gonna paste in the channel ID. Now, you have to keep the channel ID as a number. I actually made the mistake and made it a string earlier, but um, this needs to be a number for the Discord bot to be able to understand. Before we can get started coding our bot, there's one more thing we have to do. We've got to go back to our developer portal and enable all of the bot gateway intents. If you scroll down, you'll see this thing called privilege gateway intents, and they're all off by default. And these are things like uh, knowing if your bot will receive updates, messages, and be able to read contents. So we have to turn these on to say that our bot is going to do all of these things. So we'll click Save Changes, I just turned all of them on, and now our bot should be ready. And so now my bot is added to the server, it's been configured correctly from the developer portal, and in VS Code I also have my bot token and my channel ID ready to go. So we're ready to start writing code for our bot right now. If you type in Discord PY documentation in Google, you should be able to find a documentation page for the whole a Python package with a bunch of examples like this quick start guide, how to create a bot. So you can refer to this uh, for reference later. I'm gonna walk you through all the things you need so you don't have to read this now, but this is how I found out what I had to do for my bot. So this is a really useful resource. So the first thing we have to do is actually import uh, the bot script. So let's go ahead and import it. Now, in a lot of beginner or quick start Discord tutorials, um, they'll recommend you to use Discord client as a way to communicate with Discord instead of the bot. However, there is actually another class called bot, and we get it from this discord.ext commands, um, which is a client as well, but it actually has some helper functions to make it work better as a bot. Like it's easier to write commands and take arguments uh, from that. So we're gonna use that instead of just the regular client. So to create a bot, we have to write this, bot equals um, 
bot equals commands dot bot and then we have to provide a command prefix. So a command prefix is something we have to type at the start of every command. For example, if I wanted to say hello, then I'd have to type exclamation mark hello, or I can make this anything I want. I can make this, uh, for example, I can make this a dollar sign as well, but I'm just gonna use the exclamation mark because that makes sense to me. Another thing we'll have to provide is this intense keyword. Um, I don't know if this was required originally, but I tried to run it without it and it didn't work. So we're gonna just do intense equals discord.intense.all. Uh, I'm going to import Discord as well. So now our bot should be set up properly. Uh, let's write our first handler for it. So we can think of that as a function that runs on certain event triggers. And the most basic one that we can write is for it to say hi to us when we start the bot and when it's ready. Okay, so here's the snippet. We do at bot.event to signal that this is an event, and then we'll say on ready. So these are predefined names that uh, the bot will recognize as certain events. And then again, if you wanna know what all the options are, you can refer to the documentation that we looked at earlier. And this is an async function. Actually, most of our event handlers are going to be async functions. So just stick async in front of that function definition and you should be good. And then I'm just gonna have it print hello discord study bot is ready to the console. Now to run our bot, we actually have to type bot.run and we'll have to pass in our token. So now a very basic bot is ready to test out. So just to summarize, we've imported the Discord packages that we need. We have our bot token here and our channel ID here. Uh, we create this bot with the command prefix of exclamation mark, which we're not using yet. And we're also saying that it intends to use all features of Discord. And we have this on ready handler function to print hello, the bot is ready. And then finally we run it, and this is a looping function. So once we run this, this application will sort of stay in this loop until we exit it with control C. So let's save that and run it and see if it works. I'm just gonna type Python bot.py and then run that. And you can see that it's logging in, it's getting connected to Discord, and now it's printed out, hey, the bot is ready. So that's good. This is a very basic thing and it works. If we go to the channel though, nothing's really happening yet. So let's take this a step further and actually make it print, hello, the bot is ready to the channel. So I'm just gonna stop that bot and clear the terminal. So first we have to make it know which channel it's gonna send its chat to. We actually have the channel ID already, so this is easy. We can type this. Channel equals bot dot get channel and then the channel ID. And again, it's important that this is actually a number and not a string. That's what Discord expects. And then to make it say something to the channel, we can use channel dot send. This is an asynchronous function, so we have to put a wait in front of it so that the function waits for this to finish before moving on to the next line. And then we can type whatever string we want here. So let's start this up again and check if it actually says something to our channel. Okay, so now I'm back in the channel and I can see that it's saying, hello, study bot is ready. And there's our icon for the bot there. So all good, that seems to be working properly. Next, we're gonna look at how we can send commands to our bot. So a command is something that we type in in the Discord chat. For example, if I wanna say hi to it, I might type exclamation mark, hello, like that, and then send it. And right now it's not doing anything, but I want it to say hi back to me. So how do I do that? Again, this is really easy with the Discord bot API. We would just do a decorator called bot.command. And then whatever I name the function is gonna be the name of the command that I need to type in in the Discord channel for, for me to use that function. So here I wanna call it hello. All commands have this context argument as the first argument. That just gives us a bunch of information of how the command was sent to the bot. In this case, if we send this to the bot via the channel, then we can just send it back through the context. So it's really simple. This way we don't even have to search for the channel using the channel ID like this anymore. We just use context.send and then that will say hi back. So here's our hello command. Again, we have to do await because this is an async function and then we send the message back. Let's go back to our bot. Let's run this, go back to our bot and see if it can actually respond to hello now. So the bot is ready and let's type in my command exclamation mark hello and that works the bot says hello back to me as soon as i say this now what if i want to actually send more information like uh to the bot what what if i want to say maybe add and then i want to 
add a couple of numbers like this together. Add four, five, six, and see what happens. To do that, it's actually really simple as well. All we have to do is just put in arguments after uh, the first context argument there. So let's get rid of this hello command. I don't need this anymore. And let's add a couple of numbers. Add x and y together. These are all going to be strings as received by the bot. So we're going to have to cast them to int if we want to do any kind of... Uh, and this also assumes that we send two arguments to the command. If we send one or I send more than one, it might not work as you intend. So let's just do this first. Let's add two numbers and then see if we can uh, give it a response. Okay, let's try that now. So let's go ahead and refresh this. And now if I go back to my Discord and I run add and then four and five, so I get four plus five equals nine. What happens if I only add one number? Well, nothing happens. And if I go back to my bot, I see that there's an error here. It says it's, it's an exception and it's a required argument that's missing. Okay, so I actually have to provide both of these things. Now, what happens if I give more than two arguments? Add four, five, six. Well, it just ignores the last argument. So it only takes the arguments that, um, that we specified in the interface here. Okay, but that's useful to know. And that's how you can add arguments to a command for the bot. If you wanted to take an arbitrary number of arguments, you would also use this star array, and then it's gonna interpret everything we type into it as an array. In this case, uh, we can actually loop through the array like this R variable as if it was a real array, cast everything to an int and then add it to the result. So in this case, I can actually add any number of arguments I want to. And let's restart the bot and try that again. Okay, so let's say add four, five, six, and maybe even 900. And there we go, it's managed to add all of those things together. Okay, so now let's go back to our goal of making this a bot that helps us um, keep track of a study or our working sessions. To do that, I actually need to store a state of whether I am currently studying or not studying, or actually I'm working or not working, and then a start time for that session as well. So I'm gonna call this, I'm gonna make a new class for this, and it's gonna be a data class. So I'm gonna import data class. From data class, import data class. And this is gonna help me create a structure in Python that I can just use to store information. I'm gonna call this a session. And I'm going to have is active, which is going to start as false. And I'm also going to have start time, which is going to be an integer, which I'm going to make a Unix timestamp, set it to zero at the beginning. So here's my session. And I'm going to put that at the top here. Should actually be in a separate file, but we're not going to do that for now. And I'm going to create a new session like that. Now I'm going to have a command to start a session. Uh, or to end a session and also to remind me to take a break if the session's been going on for too long. So let's implement that. I'm gonna get rid of this add command, I don't need it anymore. Instead, I'm gonna create one called start and that's gonna start my session. And here's the code for it. If the session is already active, I'm just gonna say that the session is already active and return and do nothing. Otherwise, I'm gonna set it to active and then I'm gonna set the start time and I'm gonna say when it started. And in my message, I'm actually gonna make it also print out the start time. So let's see if that works. Let's go ahead and run the bot. So I'll type in exclamation mark start. Okay, and that works. Uh, it now starts a new session and it tells us that we started it at this date and time. Now this is actually really just kind of complicated to read. If I want to make the timestamp a little bit easier to read, I can just make it a human readable time. Like this, and then I'll replace that here. Okay, so that's a little bit better. It now says new session started at blah, 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 blah. It doesn't have all this time zone and milliseconds things that I don't care about anymore. Um, so we also want a command to stop the session that has been started. So let's go ahead and implement that. And I'm gonna call this command end. So I'll have to type exclamation mark end to finish the session. If the session isn't active, it's just gonna say no session is active and return, just like in the first one. Um, otherwise, it will turn the session off. It'll set it to false. It'll say the end time is this, and then it will have this duration. 
Um, I don't really like that it just records the duration in seconds because what if I study for hours or minutes? It's not gonna be really nice to read. So again, I'm gonna turn this into a human readable duration. And I'll have to import date time as well. So let's run this again and see if we can actually start and end the session, see what happens there. So I'm gonna type, I'm gonna actually start by typing end and see what happens. Okay, so so if I type end before I start a session, it says no session is active and that's ex exactly what I expected. Um, I'll type start and here's a new session starting at this time. And then if I type start again, nothing should happen. It says the session's already active. Okay, that's great. And now if I type end, the session ends and I get this time here. I don't really know if that's quite human readable. We could probably do a lot better there, but that's really not the point of this bot. So um, that's one way you can improve it, but I'm not gonna spend any more time on that for this tutorial. Instead, let's make it give us a reminder after we've been starting a session for a certain amount of time. So if we're studying or working, it's useful to take breaks. Um, and that could be 15 minutes or 45 minutes or whatever it is. So let's define a custom period of time. So let's say that we have a max session time of 30 minutes and after 30 minutes we want the bot to tell us to take a break. Well Discord API actually has this thing called task and with the task we can actually set a timer for it. So we can say that okay run this task in a loop every one minute, every 30 minutes or whatever it is. So our plan here is to create a task when we start one of these study sessions. And we're gonna set a timer on that equal to whatever max session time that we want. And when that time is up, we want to tell us that we need to take a break. So let's see how we can do that. So first let's create that task. I'm gonna to need to go up here and import a uh, task from here as well. And to use the task, I will do at task.loop. Then I've got a couple of things I can put. So the minutes is obviously the time between each uh, execution of the task. And then I've already got this variable here, max session study time minutes, and I'll put that there. Um, I can also make it do it a certain amount of times. I can do it once, twice, or whatever. Um, the thing with the task is that as soon as we start this task loop, it would do one execution of that right away as we use it. Obviously, what will happen if we do that is that as soon as we start this session, the task will execute to take a break and it will take a break immediately as soon as we start. So basically it's just gonna start and stop within that same second and we don't want that. So we wanna ignore the first time the task is called. So we actually wanna put count to two so that it does this twice the first time and then we're gonna ignore the first time and then the second time is when we're actually gonna take a break because the second time will happen after you know 30 minutes or whatever time we set there. So let's go ahead and create this function async def break reminder. I'm gonna call it break reminder. Okay, so this looks pretty good. We find the channel that we wanted to type in and then we'll send this message to the channel. Take a break, you've been studying for this many minutes. Now, messages being sent to Discord are actually Markdown compliant or at least for the most part, uh, which means that we can make it bold or whatever using traditional Markdown conventions. Uh, so to do that, we'll add a double asterisk to take a break just to make it more emphasized in the message. And we're gonna see that when we test the message out. However, remember what I said before, we don't want this to execute right away with the first count. So we're gonna make it ignore the first time that this uh, is looping. And we can do that by doing the name of the function. So break reminder dot current loop. And this is the iterator index of how many times this is executed in the loop. So if the current loop is zero, it's the first time we execute it, which will happen right away if we call it in here. And we're just gonna return. And then we're gonna get the reminder the second time. We can actually do more here. We can make the session stop as well, or we can make it loop more than three times. And then, you know, it will remind us every 30 minutes to take a break while the session is active. But for this one, I'm just gonna make the count two. So it's just gonna give us one reminder and that's gonna be it. Uh, but you can change this to do whatever you want. So uh, now I actually need to start this task. So I can do it here. If I turn the session active um, before I send this message, I'll just do break reminder dot start and that will start this break reminder loop. Also, I don't want my break reminder to continue after I finish studying. So I might also do break reminder dot stop um, when I end the session. 
Now, I wanna test this, but 30 minutes is a little bit too long to wait. So I'm just gonna change this temporarily to two minutes, just so that it's a little easier to test. And now I'm gonna run it again. So the bot is ready. Let's go back to the channel and then type start. So I started the session at 6.44. Now I'm just gonna wait two minutes and then see what happens if the bot tells me to stop. So I fast forward the video for two minutes and now you can see that this message appears. Um, take a break, you've been studying for two minutes and it's in bold here so it's got extra emphasis and that's everything seems to be working correctly so that's fine. So I'm just gonna type end the session. Session ended after two minutes, 40 seconds. And that's actually pretty much it for this tutorial. Um, so let's just recap our file again and what we've built here. We've got a couple of the imports here for all the things that we need. We have the bot token, which is sort of like our password for the Discord bot. Now you have to remember to keep this token secret and don't reveal it. Uh, best to use a environment variable or something to store this so that it's actually not saved in your code that people can see. You have the channel ID, which is the channel that we created that we want the bot to talk into. So this is a number and you can get this by enabling developer mode in Discord and then just right clicking the channel. We've got our settings for the bot, like how many uh, what's the maximum minutes we want a session to run for before we remind the user to take a break. So normally this could be something like 45 minutes, but we set it to two just to test it. I've got a data class here to store information about my current session, and it's gonna be active or not active, and it's gonna have a start time. So we know when we started the session and how long that session runs for. To create the Discord bot, we actually use the commands.bot uh, with the command prefix of exclamation mark and with all intents enabled. Uh, back in our developer portal, we also actually had to click to enable all of these things, otherwise the bot won't start. And then we create a new instance of the session in memory for Python to use. We've got a couple of bot handler event functions here. So all these bot events are uh, things that we have to put this decorator around, this at bot.event to signal that we want to use it as a bot event. Uh, we have an on ready event to say hi to us when the bot is first connected to the server. We also have a task loop to tell us after 45 minutes or whatever time we want to take us a break. And this will execute two times, but we're going to ignore it the first time because that one always executes right away. So if it's the first instance of that execution, we're just going to return. Otherwise, we're going to send a reminder to the channel to take a break that because we've been studying or working for this much time already. Finally, we have two bot commands, a start and an end command. And we can interact with these by typing exclamation or whatever it is, our command prefix here, uh, exclamation start or exclamation end. And this will either start or stop the session based on the current state of things. If we end a session, but nothing's running, nothing's gonna happen. Same with starting a session when one has already been started. And we start the task loop that we created earlier, break reminder, uh, when we start the session. And this is only gonna execute two times. The first time we ignore it, because that happens right away. So in effect, it will only execute once after this amount of time, and it would remind us to take a break. And then after that, it won't do anything again. So that's up to us. Uh, we also stop the loop if we end the session manually, just because if we start the session, but we stop it before that break time, we don't want it to send us a reminder if we've already stopped the session. Finally, with all those things added to our bot, we run it using our token. And this is what connects the bot and keeps it in a loop. And that pretty much summarizes our Discord bot. I hope it went smoothly for you and that you're able to get it working. If not, um, let me know in the comments. Also, if you have suggestions or comments or questions, you can let me know in the comments as well. Now, to keep the bot active, you have to run it on your computer. So in the terminal or in your editor or whatever it is, just run it and as, as long as that process is active, the bot will be connected to Discord and you'll be able to use it. However, this is probably not practical if you wanna scale it to production. So if you want to deploy it somewhere and have it running all the time without uh, relying on your personal computer, you can deploy it to the cloud. Uh, something like an AWS EC2 server or any of the other major cloud providers have an option to do that. And you can probably do that to for very cheap or for even for free. Um, but that's not in the scope of this tutorial. Uh, if that's something you're interested to do, then let me know and I can make a follow-up tutorial to show you how to do that. Um, but anyways, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed that and thank you for watching.